as far as media freedom is concerned, the PN government is actually redefining that boundary for journalists. The problem nowadays is self-censorship. Sometimes the media is not free because sometimes they kowtow to the government too much. Reporters in Malaysia have had an increasingly difficult time with accessing information, accessing data, even speaking to the people that we need to be interviewing. Part of it is, of course, due to the pandemic, but there is an increased reluctance for people to engage with the media. There is a crackdown, depending on who is the Prime Minister. It's not so much of a crackdown, but supporters from politician or political party trying to heckle and cyberbully reporters. They will advise you not to write. Otherwise, they will just charge you in court or they beat you up inside. There have been actions made against those who are attempting to come out and report the truth. It is quite disturbing that the police are launching investigations against journalists just for doing their job. You will see some people err on the side of self-censorship because they just don't want to get into trouble. People seem to forget that the news doesn't belong to, you know, sort of your politicians. It belongs to the people and we're just the conduit. I was beaten up by cops and fractured my jaw on it. I've been uh, attacked by supporters of political parties online. We have actually launched two separate investigations on me. One was under the OSA over a series of reports. I wrote about the findings of an independent inquiry into the 2016 fire at Hospital Sultana Amina. I was questioned twice this year, once for a book that was published, I think, in 2018 and for reporting on the May Day immigration crackdown in a red zone in KL. When I wrote the article about Muhyiddin, they investigated me and they charged me in court. At first, they said insulting the Agong. If you actually read the thing, I did not insult him. So now they only say that I bring unhappiness to the public and it was against the federal constitution and all that. They were only called, no one is charged yet. They are playing the game because they know that once the journalists are arrested without any good reason, it's gonna paint a bad light for them. I was reporting on the blockades by the Tamiya Orang Asli in Gua Musang, Kelantan. So there's this piece of law that says that you have to have permission to be in the jungle. So they used that piece of law on me and my cameraman. They were threatening me, they were yelling at me. 30 men surrounded us. My cameraman just had <laughs> camera you know we're not going to give you human rights organizations and media fraternity made a lot of noise we were released within the same day i think part of it is due to a unstable political scene right now people in politics didn't really like it when it painted them in a bad light they need to show they can prosecute you you know to frighten you it's afraid of being accountable for the policies that it put in place they want to control the narrative of the nation there is a great need of this pn government to secure power by whatever means to get the love of the rakyat and to punish people who may report on things, expose things that are not conducive to their political survival. I think media practitioners and journalists need to be brave to speak out. You need to remember why they're journalists in the first place. There's nothing much we can do except to continue writing. We have to be brave enough to write. Because once they start investigating you, you're already in that list. If you don't write, who will write? Who will talk on behalf of the riot? The public must support, must demand, and must ensure that media in Malaysia is free from being clapped by anyone in power. Abolish repressive laws. I think a lot of things have been classified, say, as official secrets when they're not necessarily the... Sorry. Hi, can I call you back? I think there needs to be uh, more transparency from all of our leaders, uh, especially those who are elected. There needs to be more data available, not just to reporters, but to the general public. I think that journalists have to ensure that they do not give in to the temptation to practice self-censorship. So whatever governments, whatever names they can come up with, we need to maintain our integrity and our freedom. We also need to be ready to sacrifice our freedom. Are you ready to have police knocking on your doors in the middle of the night and is your family ready for that to happen? In the end, it's all part of the job. You get injured, you get heckled, you get harassed. If your fellow journalists are being threatened, I think it's important for us to speak out on behalf of them. Speak out to let them know that you're there, that they're not alone, that they're not unimportant. I really wish that the government would remember this, you know, that whatever we report is always in the public interest and the government always has the right to buy. 
There's nothing stopping them from issuing a press statement explaining their side of the issue. No need to kill the messenger. I suppose that's good to have a media council where we uh, self-regulate, speak in one voice, support one another, press freedom for media freedom. Make sure that uh, our journalism is up to the standard and to play a role as check and balance in the society. The media council has to be very strong and brave. I don't really see the value of one. If we were to have a media council, then I think the first thing the media council should do is ensure open access to press conferences for all media and not just select media. Also to ensure that uh, government officials are open to answering questions as posed by the media instead of having to vet through their questions. If they sorted that one out, that's a pretty good sign. It would be extremely valuable for the industry to have an independent media council that is able to speak up for our interests and is formed not just of the old guard but also women considering how much uh, online violence is directed towards female reporters and of course diversity is necessary. Once this media council is set up, we need to set up things like a code of conduct and ethics and things like that. The setting up of an independent media council would go a long way towards giving reporters a way to sort of speak out and speak up.